Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part two of the Toshiba Seed 321 hybrid 13-inch uh, color TV. If you're just joining us, the last video, which I encourage you to watch, was uh, fixing a vertical sweep failure uh, that we found as a result of pulling the vertical module out and finding a dead connection on the plate of the vertical oscillator. That gave us a picture. However, uh, the picture was very weak in contrast and uh, very poor quality. <clears throat> Excuse me. Granted, we were using over the air, but uh, I feel as though, given my history with other sets, that we should have had a slightly better bit of performance. So, what we're going to do today is just a general go over of the set. Uh, we are going to pull each module out and go over it, uh, resoldering the tube sockets, checking any electrolytics. The real challenge is going to be down in here where you can see a hidden module behind the others. And that has to do with the CRT driver board. Now the CRT driver board in this is solid state. Uh, and that could be the reason why we were getting the red flashes on the screen if you watched the other video. Could be a transistor. Could be something that's uh, causing problems. But anyway, we have to get to that board. And in order to get to that board, it looks as though this sub-chassis here needs to come out and away. So that could be a little bit tricky when we get to that spot because obviously we'll have to remove the tubes at the very least and unplug some things. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're going to do today. That and clean all the switches and controls. So let's get to it. And let's go ahead and uh, we've got two chroma modules up here that we're going to start with first. And then we have our video amp module here, our sound. And then we also have our horizontal sweep. Um, that I think will be last since we know that works. And it's interesting how they have the uh, sockets installed here to dissipate a lot of the heat that would nominally occur with other styles of sockets. So that's kind of cool. So let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is start with this top chroma module. And we have to pinch the clip here to get it loose and started. And do the bottom one here as well. This bottom clip has glue on it, so that's going to make it a little bit tricky. Get something underneath here to pry this up. Hopefully not breaking the board. Yep, this one's really fragile. I already made a little tiny crack here at the bottom, so we got to get this one out really easy and not stress it too much. Let's see if we can trim away some of the plastic that's holding this retainer in. Someone has chosen to slather this retainer with glue, which wasn't true on the other ones. Try a set of pliers with a little more grip and just squeeze that one. And see if we can get this out without destroying it. And so let's see if we can pry down from the top. Since those two methods aren't working, this board really doesn't want to come out. They've got this retainer on here that is glued and glued to the board. So trying to pinch the retainer that would normally get this off has become very difficult. And I don't I obviously don't want to break the board. Because that's going to create a whole mess of problems.
I may end up having to break this little plastic retainer here just so that I can get the board out. There's also a tiny little coil next to this thing that I don't want to injure either. Yep, I'm just going to end up breaking the little plastic thing because this is ridiculous. So let's just cut the remainder out. These pins bite down hard enough that I'm not really worried about them holding in place or not holding in place, but you can see there quite a significant amount of glue they put over that. I hope I didn't injure that little coil there. I didn't create any cracks other than this one right here through the uh, through the bottom this here so I may scrape away and add some solder for reinforcement or add some epoxy on the front side but I think this board needs to be resoldered too I can see a number of connections on these tubes that is uh, kinda questionable like here's another plate connection up top that's got a break around the base of the lead there. You've got this one here on the bottom of this uh, tank circuit here that's kind of touchy. This here, this cathode on this guy right here, that's starting to break free too. And then of course the pins on the bottom don't look all that great. Especially that one right there, that one right there, that one right there. They're kind of sad. This one up top here doesn't look good, so let's resolder all of those. Yeah, let's see. I like how they label it. They label each board so you can't put them in wrong. So it's like, here's chroma one, here's chroma one. So if you yank them out and you don't know, that at least helps you. And you got the big fat color crystal here. So that's probably your oscillator, and this is probably your burst amp. You can see they've got a transistor here, and that's a bipolar transistor and not a FAT. So I'm going to pull out this guy, and we'll check and resolder this guy too. That retainer just cracked. This is what, 50 year old plastics? Alright, you're coming out of there. Alright, there's Chroma 2. Ooh, that one's really bad too. Come on, stop moving. That one right there, that connection right there is almost completely gone. And then this heater connection over here is pretty bad. The cathode connection here, so that needs to be resoldered for sure. And then we'll check these electrolytics. You've got a couple of chokes there and that adjustment. And all those little ceramic capacitors, they're underneath the shield, so there's obviously some uh, sensitivity there that they wanted to take care of. So we're going to solder that board. So let's take a look at the soundboard now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Air quality really sucks today. I'm going to take loose that connector. That terminal strip is separate from that.
And we'll give this guy a squeeze. And then, let's see. This down here. That retainer there. And then finally, this one at the bottom. And this is where having curved hemostats really helps. And I think I'm going to insert a little bit of a pry bar down in here to get this section loose. It's not going to cooperate for me today. There we go. There's our sound module. Oh, look at the pretty hidden fuses. Didn't know about those. So obviously our soundboard is completely solid state. You've got your little audio transformer there. You've got your detector coils here. So we'll check all the electrolytics there. Other than the pins that connect everything, the overall board doesn't need a whole lot of soldering. I will resolder the pins because they look shady, but the rest of the board including the fat connector at the bottom still looks good. So again, tubes and circuit boards don't mix. The low power stuff that doesn't generate heat survives. But the uh, the other stuff doesn't. That's cool that we reveal these little hidden fuses I didn't know about there. There's no like I said the little tag that tells you about everything is missing on this set. So I'd have to search for those for a while if I needed to troubleshoot some things. And then finally, we'll get the uh, video board loose. This one's going to cooperate a lot better. And i got to be careful not to damage that delay line there, or we'll have some problems. Poor video response, etc. Don't want to break the delay line. There we go. That comes out. Tokyo Shibota. And looking at this. Heater connections on this guy here are about ready to die. Plate on this guy is about ready to die. Tie point's ready to die, but that doesn't matter because there's nothing connected to it. However, this heater lead and the G1 lead on this video amp are about ready to go. This pin right here is literally just hanging on. Wiggle, wiggle. So that needs to be redone. This one up here, too, that one's pretty bad. <clears throat> this is obviously your power supply board behind all this mess because you've got these big fat dropping resistors in here, fuses, yeah that looks like power supply board or regulator board assuming there is a regulator, I assume there is for solid state because solid state's a lot more sensitive to voltage fluctuations than tubes are, although yeah you're going to need it no matter what. It makes me wonder if I have to yank the whole chassis in order to get to the rest of this because there's screws holding on this clamp, which you obviously can't get to easily with the CRT in the way. Maybe they just didn't want you to service that. Interesting. Let's pop this out here and take a look down and below. Yeah, there's trying to get to that is not easy, but that's your video output right there. There's a drive control there.
that really needs attention, but we got to work on figuring out how we're going to get to that. Because obviously there's this that releases uh, this bracket here, this bracket here, but then you got this side, which you have screws on there, not very easily accessible. So we may have to yank this whole chassis in order to get to that board, which is a royal pain, but while we're at it, I suppose we can look at other things like the power supply caps and stuff, which I'm sure will need some sort of attention. But for now, let's focus on doing some maintenance on the boards and uh, resoldering the tube sockets and things, testing the tubes, and then see if we get any improvement over the last time we powered this up. So let's go ahead and start with the Chroma 1 board. And let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm working with. And hopefully it will stay in focus as I do this because it has a tendency to just kind of drift and do whatever it wants. But I'm going to go ahead and start resoldering these sockets. The way I like to restore a TV is uh, basically get it running and then work up from there as improvements. Thankfully the power supply on this one was running so I was able to get a picture at least. So we dealt with a vertical failure which meant no picture and now we're just going to go through and make sure that all these boards are going to be reliable enough that we don't have to troubleshoot them or yank them in and out all the time. Yeah, there are a couple of these connections here on this tank, which I'm not really happy with. So we're going to redo these. Don't want to keep your iron on there too long because you might break loose the tiny little wire that's soldered to the other end of that post. When you're doing rework like this, it's really crucial to have a really hot soldering iron. Uh, this one's set to about 800 degrees. I'm using a Hack OFX 888, which replaced my old 950 that finally died after 20 years. 20 years of continuous use, so that's pretty good. But so far I like this one. This one works out pretty well. That connection was really bad there. All right. This one over here doesn't look all that good. This one could use a touch up. The way I look at the solder pad, I look for the crystallization of the solder and any sort of cracking or anything that occurs. And it will usually happen right where the lead protrudes from the solder pad. Ring around the lead. Let's resolder these resistors. Anything that could generate heat, I'm not very trusting of the uh, solder connection. Okay. Looking for any more possible loose or bad connections. The reason why I rotate it like this is oftentimes I don't see something until the light hits it at a certain angle. Like this one right here. 
that little tiny connection there, it's got a ring around it, which I couldn't really see until I had it at a certain angle. I'm not sure if the camera picked it up, but it's there. This number four connection here too could use a little bit of touch up. This resistor up here. It's all about taking your time and just being thorough. My goal is, is to not have to take this apart for a while. Granted, it's not going to be in regular use. I might turn it on once a month or something like that, but I don't want to have to keep servicing it if I don't need to. Alright, so this board more or less looks satisfactory in my eyes. I think what we're going to do next is uh, test these two tubes. Strange numbers, this is uh, five, 5 EW6, and this is the infamous 6GH8, which most manufacturers in the color world used for uh, oscillators, burst amps. We'll check this little one microfarad jobber too, just to be sure that he's happy. Let's zoom out, and let me go grab a test instrument. Yeah. We'll just do a brief check on this uh, electrolytic here. Uh, let's set it back there. I guess we'll put it on its side <laughs> because it doesn't want to stand up the other way. Let's just check this one microfarad. Yeah, you're okay. That's about what I expect. All right. So the next thing we need to do look for any obvious signs of death resistors or anything. Um, yeah, I want to ohm out this coil make sure that it didn't die as a function of me yanking it out of the socket when I took the board out of the set. So we'll come up here. Yeah, you're still alive. That's good. I was very worried that I had injured it. Okay, so the next thing to do is get the uh, tube checker out and test these two tubes. Okie dokie. So I guess we'll test the weird one first, which is the uh, 5EW6. That's a little weird. Uh, let's see here. That's uh, so, uh, blah, 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 blah. socket one, and yeah, sensitivity at 77. Let's see the filament lighting. Maybe we've got dirty pins or dirty socket. It's starting to come around. That sucker's dead. Okie dokie. Yeah, I ain't doing squat. That could be a reason for our uh, loss of color. That could be a burst amp. That could be a oscillator, very likely a burst amp or a keyer. Anyways, that tube is dead. Okay, and let's test the infamous 6GH8. Uh, there's actually a marking on the socket here. It's socket 6. And the two settings are, the first section is 68 and the next is 56. 
I've got a socket saver in there because, as you might imagine, I test a lot of 6GH8s. These are very notorious for going bad, shorting, loss of emission. Sets just beat these to death. Of course, given the fact that most of the tubes we've tested so far, including the verticals, were very weak, this is probably a high hour set. And it's got a short. And weak emission. Second section tests better than the first, but it's got a short, so kind of like I figured that's defective. Let me see if I've got a spare 6GHA kicking around here. I'm sure I do. Alright, here's a Sylvania pole I had kicking around. Let's see how he checks. And if he's good, we'll just stick him in the socket. No shorts. No emission either. All right. Now I marked it as low emission. All right. Let me grab another one. All right. Here's another one. Another pull I yanked from something. I didn't put any markings on this one though. Got to learn to read. Reading's important. We'll see if this one behaves any better. That one's got a short failure. All right, on to the next one. All right, well, I don't have any more, it looks like. That was the last 6GH8 I had. It was a pull, and it wasn't any good. Uh, so, while well, I got this apart, let's see here. We'll test some of the other tubes while I got it apart. Mine as well. The next is on the other chroma board, which is a 9ML8. That's a weird one. All right. All right, so it looks like it's a pretty complicated one. It does a lot of stuff. All right, so this is going to be 9 volts, obviously. Socket 29, sensitivity 55. And F, two blanks. A, B, blank, and C, blank, and E, and B, and A. Pop this sucker in here and see what it does. These Japanese sets are known for having very strange tubes. There's probably a good chance that I don't have this in my other inventory. I'm going to have to write down a list of stuff I need. No short. Uh, but we do have grid emission failure, so fluctuating uh, emission too, so there's an intermittent short there. Grid emission gets worse the more it heats up, so I'm just going to say nope on that one. So, so far all of these tubes we've checked on both chroma boards are bad. That could be the reason why we're not getting any color. I'm still going to rework the solder on that board, but we're definitely going to need to get tubes. Alright, so on to the video board. And it looks like the next one is a 10KR8. Again, weird stuff. And that's going to be socket 8, 22 and 50. So socket 8, wait for that bad boy to warm up, no short, no grid short, it's coming around. Yeah, it's still usable. Not great, but it's usable. It's 
it's a little tired. We could probably get some better video response out of it if we had a hotter tube, but I'll stick that one on the list too, the ones to go look for. And then the video output. Interesting. 10BQ5. So it's a 6BQ5 with a 10 volt heater. This is a 6BQ5 is a pretty hot uh, Class A amplifier. So let's see, socket 29, sensitivity 40, E, C, A, B, blank, F, blank, and D. Yeah, definitely a series string set for it to use. All these oddball tubes. But that's a fairly hot Class A amplifier. 10BQ5. It's a little sad. Pins are touchy, but it never really comes above that. So, not dead, but not great either. It's uh, weird that they would have such a a high power amplifier for a video output. You must be driving that tube really hard. All right, so the synopsis here is uh, just about all the tubes are tired or near dead. Uh, the ones on the chroma boards are definitely dead. The ones on the video boards are tired. So I think we'll end up making a list of tubes that we should get for this thing. Go through my storage bins and see what else needs to be gotten. Uh, so let's get back to reworking the boards. Alright, so back to the matter at hand. Here's our Chroma 2 board, which we need to resolder. And let's just go ahead and rework these pins here. Let's do all the connection pins. All right, so that's the major problems on that board. Let's just kind of look it over here and see if we find anything else that is questionable. These connections up here on this guy I'm not really happy with, so let's redo those. This guy, this guy, this one doesn't look all that great either. This guy's got a little crystallation on it. Crystallization, yes. Not good with the words today. Okay. Let's go over this again.
looks good enough to me. And we got this one fat electrolytic here, 4.7 at Tree Fitty. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit here, and we'll see if he's any good. Yeah, you're fine. That tests really good. So that board's done there, minus the tubes, of course. Since I didn't really see any bad soldering on this, I think what I'm going to do is just uh, resolder the edge pins here. There's a couple of them that look a little cruddy. Uh, but otherwise, I'll set this behind it as a prop. It's not going to want to cooperate with me. We'll just resolder the pins on this. Then we'll test all the electrolytic capacitors. And this may be mundane work, but this work will determine largely the reliability factor of the set after we're done with it. Because if you just, you know, replace the bad tubes or whatever, you, you don't see the sockets that need to be resoldered, which could turn into an intermittent problem as the tubes heat up. You don't see uh, the cracks in the pins that connect the modules to the chassis. So again, more problems that show up. So it's just the little things. When you're fixing one of these things, you just have to be very thorough. All right, so there are a lot of electrolytics on this board. Let's go ahead and zoom out. And we'll Check these guys out here. He's good. This guy here. Test good. The little guy next to him. Yep, that's still good. This guy back here in the back. It's nice that they mark them on the board for you. Still good. And this one down here. Still good. Those all test excellent. Nothing peeing, no capacitors leaking or anything like that. So that's a good thing. And then we've got this uh, video board. Let's check these two buffer caps on the video board. That one's still pretty good. That one's still pretty good and checks about the same. Nothing oozing from them. So let's go ahead and rework the soldering on this one. You notice that a lot of these have been uh, plate connections and heater connections, things that generate heat. Uh, current and heat will break down the solder faster than just heat alone or just current alone. In my experience anyway.
section there looks a little cruddy too. Alright, let's take a glance at this board. Those things right there don't look all that good. Come on. Clean the tip a little bit. That one there doesn't look that nice. here this resistor up here you can see that they they put this way up off the board so it obviously generates some heat this lead here is kind of cruddy let's see who else these guys down here are not good Looking good so far. Take a look at it again. That connection down there hiding underneath is not looking very good. And this one here next to it. That one didn't quite take. There looks a little crummy. Not sure if I like that either. Kidoki. This one up here, I can see a ring forming. This down here has got some crystallization. We'll do that too. That one doesn't look good. I keep moving it around and I keep seeing more. It's all about how the light hits it. You can see the early signs of failure in solder. Okay. That's looking pretty good. That one up there, let's see. Yeah. He could use a little touch up too.
Okay. One last look. This down here I think we'll redo. I don't think it quite got hot enough. Much better. Gotta make sure that so solder flows correctly. Did I miss that one? I don't think I did that one yet. Or if I did, it was a very crummy connection. I don't think anything's connected to these grounds, but why not? Okay. So I think we're looking pretty good here. All right, so we've reworked four modules. We really need to get a new set of tubes for these. I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of improvement until we replace them. So I'm going to go through my inventory and uh, find replacements for these guys because they're weird. I might have them somewhere or I might have to order them out. So based on the fact that I might have to order them out, I think we're going to stop the video in this part today. When we get a new set of tubes in it, uh, we'll slap these in and see if our uh, video performance and the like cleans up a little bit. Uh, but for now, uh, the board sockets are at least reworked, the pins are at least reworked, and I think that once the tubes are installed that that will make a big difference. So, hope you guys uh, enjoyed watching this part of the video, and uh, when I get a new set of tubes in it, and uh, get everything back in the set, we'll fire it up and see what happens.